Thank you for your support and for watching a Viv Tarot. This is a general pick a card reading. Take what resonates with you and leave the rest behind. Not everything will apply. My readings are meant to be constructive and not destructive. I give readings to empower you. I will be honest in what I see and will not give you false hopes or empty promises in order to keep you happy. I will be compassionate and sensitive to your feelings and will not judge or condemn. Energies are ever changing. You are still the master of your own destiny. Hi everyone, thank you for watching a Viv Tarot. And today we are going to do another pick a card reading. And today's pick a card reading, we're going to take a look at what are we good at? What are our talents? And and if you're thinking about what kind of um, job that you should pursue or side jobs or, you know, field, career, whatever, you know, it is, what can we go for, right? Give us a little bit of an advice or suggestion or like direction, okay? I would still suggest, um, since this is um, just a general reading, and it is a tarot reading, so, um, you know, just take it how it resonates. I would say that um, I've been looking at a few, like, charts, astrology charts, your birth charts, or not your, but, like, people's birth birth charts. And um, it's kind of very interesting or even a little crazy, I think. I'm like a little skeptical, so like I don't believe everything 100%, but I am willing to give it a try and see. And to my surprise, or it's very, very super interesting, is the, our charts reveal a lot about us. And, um, and if we use it in the right way, you can really live your chart like to its highest potential. And so what I'm saying is that if you really want something that's more directed to you uniquely that's watching this video right now, um, either you don't have to go, you don't have to um, ask me. You can ask anyone or um, who's who can read astrology charts who are very good. I would say find someone that's good. <laughs> um, and they can actually read your charts and tell you about what you would be, what kind of direction you can go for, okay? And I would say astrology birth chart is very accurate, I would say. It'll give you a really pretty um, good direction. It's not going to be super narrow because you don't want to be like, like narrowed down to just one job only, but... It'll give you some like ideas of like a general field and that kind of things. Okay, with that said, um, where I'm using the astrology cards today along with the tarot cards. Um, tarot cards is just to give us an advice or some additional information. But astrology cards will be the main thing I'm using. And um, so I, I, I do read astrology charts if you want to... Um, you know, book a session. And if you're only looking for like, what would you be good at and stuff like that, then just 15 minutes is plenty. So, but for other people, um, you can find your favorite astrologer and ask them to reach their, to read your chart. Okay. All right. So one, two, three, four, four different piles, pick the pile that you feel most resonated to or with. And, um, Timestamps are going to be in the description box below as well as in the message box. And it's going to be right on the timeline as well. Um, okay. If you need more time, pause the video now. And we're going to start with pile number one. All right. If you chose pile number one, let's zoom in a little. Let's take a look at what would you be good at. We're going to take two of the astrology cards. Okay. All right. Maybe, you know what? Two, three. Three astrology cards, and we're going to see how it reads. Um, I might read it in combination. Okay. Take three cards. What would pile number one be good at? What is pile number one? Possible career options, talent, etc. First one. Wow. Second. Third. 
interesting okay so we have eighth house aries and gemini um we'll talk about the eighth house first i'll talk about them separate and then i'll talk about eighth house and air um aries combination and then eighth house gemini combination aries and gemini you can't really combine them i mean you can but you can't okay so eighth house the kind of things that you can do um that's associated with the eighth house is anything that's really in depth meaning looking like beyond the surface so um psychology is one of them um if you were to become a doctor like medical doctor um psychology is one but um like surgery this is like involving life and death that's why surgery um you can be a doctor any doctor okay but surgical doctor in particular um over here eighth house you can also uh, be really good at investment handling large money so you accountant bankers um stock right anything that deals with a large sum of money so eighth house is a thing um so if you were to become a lawyer maybe you specialize in um like trusts right or handling like inheritance for people like writing up wills and that kind of things okay so um anything that's handling large sum of money so bankers investment investors that kind of thing uh or investment funds manager okay um what else eighth house police firefighters anything that's dealing with saving lives or or anything that's dealing with transforming people's lives or it could be animals to anything okay um or changing changing things from one form into another like sustaining its life that kind of things um that's dealing with the eighth house okay so now if you're in aries so because this is a general reading i'm gonna do all three of them separately you take it how it resonate um and then also do the combination you see what you resonate with okay so aries if you're um dealing this is the the aries one um aries can also be very athletic okay so you can be an athlete for if it's um with this card so like athletes anything doing with the head so you can be a hairdresser you can be a makeup artist um psychologist as well because dealing with something inside the head too okay and that would be like a kind of almost like a combination of the eighth house and aries too um surgery as well that's the eighth house and aries um combination so surgical doctor um firefighter we talked about that or police or military people um aries um anything that shows your face okay so uh like you know being in front of something or being the head of something so for example if it's um you want to be like your own you start up like a company okay being your own boss but see that's i have to say if you want to be your own boss there are some other conditions okay for example if you're just aries you maybe you're really good at starting something up but you don't have that sustainability you might need to partner up with somebody else that will handle the other stuff for you but you just go and get clients get people really excited and all that stuff so there's a little bit of a condition about you know open up opening up your own company but you have that potential um anything that's like being the first in anything okay um <clears throat> so like the first person to um i don't know um take me for example because i have my midheaven in aries um i've often joined like a competition and it's like the first time they start the competition 
and like the it's like their first year in it and i would be like one of the contestant kind of thing so like the first to participate in something right anything that's dealing with competition is um airy so that's why athletes is really good um anything that's like very competitive um would be dealing with like the aries energy um okay so now gemini um you can be a writer you can be a journalist okay and with the gemini eighth house combination not only you're a writer or a journalist you can write about crime you can write about some dark stories um you can write about like um kind of reveal the secrets of like the mystery or the secret of behind something so you can this could also be like a whistleblower type of thing so like you're the person that uncovered some sort of a truth of, of something right um you can also be like a talk a gem just a gemini could be like a host of something very good at using your oral skill okay talking skill communication skill um is gemini's like a uh, talent okay um so gemini is really good at uh create creative ideas so you can be in like sales and marketing but you're like the person that provides like people with ideas um like the brainstormer kind of thing like how about this so you come up with like all kinds of ideas for people to um to see if it's possible to do okay um sales and marketing is really good for gemini people as well um what else negotiator okay gemini um that can also be gemini eighth house to negotiator you know what people want so you tell them what they want um and negotiate thing right um what else gemini you can also do anything that's like entertaining okay um you can also be teacher but this is more like an alum like uh the elementary school type of thing um yeah elementary school k-12 type of teacher okay uh mm, with this two together, you can do investment, okay? Things that go really fast. So stock market is one, um, mutual funds, that type of things, or like risk control type of investment. So like insurance um, is that, eighth house is insurance as well, but Gemini. Event planning, okay? So. Things that's dealing with trends, that's very um, Gemini as well. So those are the things that um, I, 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 I kind of talk, I, I covered some of the um, combinations while I was talking about the individual things too. So those are the things that you would be really good at. Um, take it how it resonate. And if you want something specifically for you, then we'll have to read your chart, okay? So now any um, advice for pile number one? Advice for pile number one. Yeah, you need your enthusiasm. You might want to do it with friends, with people who are really, really good friends. Like see, Gemini, they need somebody to talk to and like maybe bounce ideas with and that kind of things. It's like that twins mentality, right? So um, I think energy, like this is very Aries energy so queen of wands you have very good intuition too so um this one not just psychology psychology is one of them but criminology would be another one okay all right so detective private eye eighth house gemini and eighth house private eye 
Okay, so Queen of Wands, you need a lot of like, you need to be really enthusiastic about your job. So like things that doesn't excite you, things that don't excite you, I don't think that that's the kind of stuff that's for you, okay? You need to be excited when you talk about it. And then I think you, see, when I was talking about opening up your own company, instead of doing it by yourself, I really do think you're uh, people who chose pile number one, you would need to do it with people, with people partner or partners okay um that's when you'll benefit from and because you can bounce ideas off of each other and you guys can um put all your strengths together and and um uh, make the best out of everybody right so that kind of thing all right so this is what i see for pile number one and if you have anything you would like to share with me, you can leave it in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, share, or subscribe to my channel under my video and turn on that notification bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Um, one last thing, eighth house. You're also really good at doing anything esoteric, okay? Esoteric stuff. Gemini, eighth house, esoteric. This is the combination of it, okay? Or just because of the eighth house. All right, so I'll see you next next time. Bye. All right, if you chose pile number two, let's take a look at what would you be really good at. What's your talent, pile number two? What is your talent? What kind of job can you choose and use and go to? Too many cards. Um, okay. Cancer. Saturn. Ninth house. Interesting. Wow, we could have, we could read all three together. I'll read them separately first, and then I'll read all all of them together, and um, and you can see which one resonate with you resonate with the most. Okay, so we're talking about cancer first. Cancer, anything that to do with food, okay, um, would be something. So you can be a chef, you can be a baker, um, that kind of things. Anything that's dealing with taking care of people, okay. So. Um, caring for people taking care of people uh or animals doesn't have to be people or plants but plants is more like taurus so i would say cancer is more of people okay um you would be really good at um anything um, dealing with emotions like so taking care of people um some emotion like calming people down right understand people's feelings and that kind of things any job that's dealing with that okay like i would even say like a hypnotist or something like that because it's like calming people down or or just like talking to people and calming them cancer taking care of them mothering them all right um anything that's good with food um, you're really good at HR. Oh, HR. That's right. Emotions, taking care of people. So anything that's dealing with human resources, right, um, will be will be um, a job for you. Um, doing things in a team or finding your own tribe is this cancer energy as well. Taking care of babies. Okay. Um, you can be a salesperson if you really want to, but um, if you were to become a salesperson, you actually would need to become like salesperson in particular field, such as selling like kid stuff, um, women stuff, um, like cosmetic stuff, or anything dealing with like home and family, right? Home and family type of stuff. Um, cancer which we'll talk about Saturn as well, but um, Cancer 
uh, is the fourth house, right? So it can also be with like anything dealing with the home or like the residence. So like an interior designer or some sort that might also be something, okay, taking or oh, organizing. So now let's talk about the combination of Saturn and Cancer. Organizing home. So you're like an organizer, okay? All right, so now um, Saturn, okay? Saturn, you can be uh, doing anything that's like, uh, like politics would be something. Anything that's dealing with organizing things, putting things into, finding like, things putting things into a restricted um things right so, <laughs> for example this is also like large corporate organizations okay anything that's like with status um or could give you status um anything that's dealing with like architecture right that anything that can give you a lot of um power Okay, so <laughs> I know because this is a Saturn thing, so that's why. Um, you can also just work for like the government, okay? Um, anything social worker, lawyer, police officer, judge, okay, professors, that kind of things is all like very Saturn. Um, and anything that deals with like almost like routine and, um, yeah, routines and that kind of things. And practical, practicality, okay, would be that. All right, so now with these two combination, it can also be like um, working for like a large private company, large private organization, um, dealing with people's like family trust family funds so work like a lawyer for like a private family like a really um wealthy family right a secretary cancer taking care of people nan this could also be a nanny cancer um saturn but the combination of cancer and saturn could be like um secretary because you're really good at planning right scheduling out stuff and then taking care of like your boss's daily stuff right hey you need to do this hey don't forget to call this person oh you have a meeting at this time so that's very this cancer saturn thing um all right now the ninth house the ninth house deals with publishing okay so or traveling okay or it could be religion charity social stuff but this is also higher education okay traveling media um cleaning so now so those are the fields that the general fields of the ninth house so anything dealing with traveling so travel agency a travel um blogger right or travel um um what else like a tour guide that would be that too. The ninth house in the Cancer could be a tour guide with the Saturn too. All these combination tour guide is like perfect because you have to keep people on a schedule, um, and taking care of everybody. Tour guides has to do a lot of things. So ninth house with these tour guides, um, but not like a domestic tour guide, but more of like the the kind that would take people abroad. Okay, so overseas that type of tour guides but but it could be in um domestic too but so what you would do is you would con be co in contact with people foreign coming to visit your city right so this is dealing with foreign people too so um so you you deal with people coming to your place and then you're guiding them and touring them and taking care of them and telling them about the history of things saturn cancer ancestry right stuff so that um social worker would be this too okay taking care of like people in the society the underdogs um the ninth house the religion the the charitable the philanthropist um right um the idealist uh over here we have the professor so you now we can 
um, uh, this is the professor's realm, ninth house Saturn, um, media, okay, publishing. Um, so if you were to become a writer type of things, you probably would write about family stuff or you write about ancestry star stuff or you can be like an, um, I think it's called anthropologist, okay, too. Digging stuff, right? The history of things, ninth house. So that would be that, okay? Um, you can also start oh, Cancer, Saturn, and ninth house. You can start out, you can start like a nonprofit organization or some sort of a foundation. You can work for a foundation or uh, build your own foundation <laughs> if you can. Um, okay, so that's that. Now, let's take a look at any additional advices that you get from tarot card. Any additional advice for pile number two? Any advice for pile number two? Yeah, you're told that you're super responsible. Oh my gosh. We got the world, which is the ninth house, very much of a traveling card. And then we got this. Both of this talks about Saturn and Cancer, taking care of people, the, the baggage, but you you willingly taking on the responsibility because it's something that you care about for people who you care about and you want to take care of. So, but the advice is that do be careful of taking on a little too much and and then now because you're a really responsible person you can't put the load down anymore now you're trying to carry the whole entire load and um of everything and everyone and and trying to complete tasks and stuff and, and just overloading yourself right so be a little bit careful of that and then um the world you have really good ability to connect everyone together and you're very uh, broadly perspective. Um, you have a wide perspective, or you should be. Okay, go travel the world. Go open up your mind. Um, if you can't, because we do have the Saturn in ninth house, and sometimes that also does mean like you have a, you might be a little scared when you go out and travel. Right, you get a little timid traveling outside of your comfort zone a little bit because the world does also talking about staying in the comfort zone and saturn and over here ninth house uh, it's very interesting um so sometimes you do get a little bit in your comfort zone so you want it maybe broadening your perspective a little bit go out and see more things and then come back and share your knowledge with people and network and that kind of things um the world i I also see it as um, if you can go out or, you know, that much, read about like other people's culture and other people's like um, things, right? Through perspective or whatever, through reading. So it because the ninth house could be about the mind, the books, right? Um, the ninth house can also be about intermingling with different fields of people, right? Broadening your perspective, going out of your comfort zone. So, um, you this is like sometimes you maybe want to take a little bit of a risk. Okay, we have the Saturn. Sometimes you can't you you get a little bit scared. And Cancer is very much about being secure and is very scared of going outside of their comfort zone sometimes. So. It does talk about the comfort zone a little bit. So going out of your comfort zone and taking a little bit of risk sometimes would be very good for you. Okay. So that's what I see for pile number two. And if you have anything you would like to share with me, you can leave it in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, share, or subscribe to my channel and my video and turn on that notification bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye. All right, so if you chose pile number three, let's take a look at what your talent is and what you would be really good at. What would be pile number three good at? And what is your talent? What? 
what is pile number three good at? What is their talent? This one. Oh, we got the ninth house again. Eighth house. Damn. Mars. Interesting. Okay. I've got a little bit of a repeat. Um, people that were having problem choosing between one or two might have ended up picking pile number three. We got some combos of one and twos. So we'll talk about these separately, and then I'll talk about Mars 8th house combination, Mars ninth house combination, okay? And see how it resonates with you. you don't, not all of them might will resonate. So the ninth house, again, um, is talking about idealism. So, you, uh, or like, um, you want to maybe build your own build or you work for like a charity you your um charity foundation social work kind of thing um you can also be this is talking about the ninth house is about traveling traveling abroad okay traveling abroad so you could be like a travel blogger travel vlogger um travel journalist travel writer type of thing um this is also working for like a publishing house or like in the media it's okay but this is more like behind the scene in media but in front instead of like in front of the media kind of things right um you can work for um companies that work that has like an international office so you a, a, a job that requires you to travel a lot okay everywhere um this is also like a higher education so you can be like a professor of something um this is also religious so religion religious so anything in the religion field as well okay religion religious okay um now let's talk about the eighth house. Eighth house is anything that's dealing with esoteric. We've got the eighth and the ninth house. So anything dealing with the esoteric stuff, like, like um, what, were, what were we talking about? Um, astrology would be one of them. Okay. Um, fortune telling, very ninth house, because ninth house, you can see beyond, see the future almost. And the eighth house is like that. So that fortune telling thing. So tarot cards might be something that you might be interested. Feng Shui, or okay, um, Chinese, or Indi, Hindu, uh, or like Vedic astrology, whatever it is. All of them. Now eighth house, um, psychology will be some of them. Criminology, um, police officer, firefighters, anything dealing with like life and death situation, saving people. Okay. Um, politics would be something as well with the eighth house um, a doctor uh any type of doctors but in particular surger surgical doctors because this is about transforming so anything that's transforming um it could be people's lives okay um or it could be transforming things from one form into another okay because this is about transformation um so what else this is also about anything that's healing. Um, let's see. Oh, investment. Okay, investment. Anything that's dealing like with large amount of money. So banker, um, investment manager. Okay, a uh, stock. Stock. Yes. Um, anything with large, large sum of money. Okay, so stock, real estate but it's like more of an investment type of thing or like risk control type of position um so like compliances eight nine thousand eighth house very co compliance type of thing especially mars in the ninth house okay um anything dealing with compliance making sure people follow the rules okay so eighth house um, anything that's dealing with inheritance it could be a lawyer so in the ninth house eighth house um i, I can see the lawyer but a um, lawyer that's dealing with inheritance or trust funds or dealing with like helping people um setting up their will type of things um what else accountant okay um 
of private eye, investigator, detective. Okay. All these are eighth house. Oh, you can work for the IRS as well, a debt collector. <laughs> okay. Um, very good with m numbers. Very good with numbers. And very good with seeing things that nobody else seeing, like beyond the surface stuff. But see, the, there's a combination with the three is that there's the eighth and the ninth. So you can see things beyond or be below of like the surface level thing. But at the same time, you see the future too. So anything that's dealing with like seeing or planning out all of the possibilities and then um and then so i think you would be really good as a consultant for people or company or like a coach of some sort so like a career coach or like a life coach um i would say that would be really good too so now let's talk about mars mars is has like um is the ruler used to be the ruler of scorpio but now is just a co-ruler um but it's the ruler of aries so you can be so for just talking about mars itself could be an athlete something that use a lot of energy like super energetic okay so um fighting for people's rights but that's also very mars of with ninth so you could be like a lawyer that deals with um labor laws rights of humans <laughs> animal whatever right animal laws dealing with like or fighting for um the liberty of some something or someone um right so what else what else what else um very enthusiastic about anything that's dealing with like say higher education or traveling or the world or the abroad thing um or very enthusiastic about the esoteric stuff um full of energy so for this one i really see like the the athlete you see i i wanted to put it in good use because this could also be like you anger issue right just mars itself or warrior there you go put it into good use a warrior fighting for something you could be a, a military oh eighth house is also about military too so you can go into the army or um the 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 navy right or the um what air force so any of those right law enforcement um very mars mars and the eighth house together that's very much that too um mars in the eighth house is also very all kinds of surgical things in the medical field too so you can be like a plastic surgeon um so any type of surgeon surgery stuff saving people's lives um mars in the ninth house i can also with the combination of the eighth house i can also see you being like the doctor who goes out to like those third world countries so the doctor without border i think that's what they're called right doing a lot of like volunteering work um working for like nonprofit organization very enthusiastic about other people okay um rights and needs okay doing things that people are scared of the mars in eighth house can also be like you are a, a total risk taker so you mars ninth house also too you might be into extreme sports so an extreme sports athlete okay super like dangerous stuff you like to try out things that nobody else has the guts to do it but you like whoa adrenaline rush type of thing okay so you like to do those kind of things or you would be really good at it or you can deal with do um open up a, a company or whatever with that okay so that's what i see for pile number three let's take a look at what kind of um, advice so wow we have the king of wands and the seven of swords so advice for you you have to be super enthusiastic about things that's the king of wands very mars energy um 
but you have that leadership too. You will be the first to do a lot of things. You you have no patience um, to wait about anything. But with the King of Wands is telling you to, even though you're enthusi enthusiastic, even though you have all these energy, but the King is has that leadership skill. They lead by example. Okay, so you want to have to lead by example and and um, be able to rein it in a little bit that energy okay and or sometimes that 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 anger and that impetuousness or something you 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 take it out into something that's that would do good things right and then over here we have the seven of swords which is talking about um, planning and strategizing which is kind of eighth house and seeing things that nobody else didn't see but over here of course sometimes people talk about the seven of swords being sneaky and that kind of thing so really like it's, i think this is partially why i keep talking about the third uh pile number three that mars energy it could be very destructive so you want to put it into good use so don't try to do eighth uh, Mars in the ninth house is that higher principle. So live with a higher moral, higher sense of morality and value instead of that seven of swords, which sometimes you're trying to get away with things like nobody knows because you are, I, I, I think pile number three, you guys are super smart. You're like the leader of everything. You're super smart. And sometimes you might be like, you know, nobody will know. Maybe I could get away with this, but yeah, maybe nobody will know, but the ninth house, there is higher power if you believe it. Okay. So have a higher, the Mars ninth house principle, higher principle, higher value type of thing, higher morals. Um, and, and just do really like put it into good use instead of trying to take advantage of other people or places or things right take advantage of things and try to get away with it but you're super smart you're like a planner you are a strategizer eighth house um so you really i think for pile number three you really can succeed in anything that you want if you really want to like really right um so yeah, that's what I see for pile number three. And if you have anything you would like to share with me, you can leave it in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, share, or subscribe to my channel and to my video and turn on that notification bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Pile number four. Let's take a look at what you would be good at. What is your talent and your ability? We've got one flew out already. What would you be good at? So that's the first one. Ooh, 10th house. Interesting. The world. The fourth house. Wow, we got a uh, holy cow. If you know astrology, you will know what I'm talking, why I'm like saying this. Fourth house, tenth house is right opposite each other. Fourth house usually, it's both parental, okay, parents, family, um, house. And then Capricorn, um, that in the natural wheel, it rules the tenth house or is associated with the tenth house. So, wow, okay. Okay, so let's talk about the 10th house. 10th house is, um, I'll talk about these three separately, and then we'll talk about Capricorn in 4th or Capricorn in 10th, like the, what are some possibilities, okay? So the 10th house, um, it's about politics, okay? It's about working in a large corporation. It's about being a judge or a police officer or a lawyer or social worker or working for the government, okay? So 10th house, you can be really good at working for the governments. You're really good at following the rules. You're really good at knowing how to work the system, like the society system, okay? Any type of systems, large system, systematic things. You know how to use that to your advantage almost or climbing up the ladders 
um, of society, of status, large corporations, okay? Um, over here, it could also be like professors, okay? You know how to, um, like you're really good, they're super wise and knowledgeable, okay? Um, anything that deals with the routine as well is very 10th house or Capricorn energy too, okay? So... Um, what I'm saying right now, because Capricorn tenth house is very similar, so um, so what I just said about the tenth house also applies to the Capricorn um, energy. And it, you're very hardworking. So I really think like hard, um, Capricorn, anything that you put your head into or anything that you want to work hard for, I think you can achieve. So Capricorn is one of those that they can just do anything they want because they work hard and um capricorn is also one of the cardinal signs so they if if there's no opportunity they will make their own opportunity they will create their own opportunity okay um but different from like aries or something there's a, a little bit of difficulty with sustain sustainability but capricorn earth sign it it can sustain it's not afraid of hard dirty work it will just keep working and so it's also a, you know um related to saturn which the the more you work on stuff the more you the older you get okay you will really succeed you'll be very successful in anything capricorn 10th house it is the highest point along with the ninth house so um 10th house is the career house so really like i think um th there's a little bit of something though about the 10th house too um you really care about what other people think of you so you you always you care about that image okay that you present to the public so you do have a little bit of a baggage um with you all the time because you want to appear responsible and that kind of thing so there's that so um but you are a very responsible person capricorn anything that's handed to you you will do and you will finish um to the best ability that you can okay so there's Ooh. that and then the and then there's the world card um i would say you could travel too it's 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 not as much as the ninth house but maybe um this is like working abroad working internationally work like it's it's the world you know how to work the system the society and now everything's interconnected so it's not just like your country but everything right all right um multi market or multi um what do you call those Oh, those are multi-million dollar companies. But yes, that too. But um, large companies, okay? I'm, I, I, if I were to give you like examples, it would be like Apple, Google, right? That kind of things. Um, where they just reach everywhere. Everyone knows, okay? You're really good at the managerial position. You know how to manage people status right large like leadership skill really good at leading people working really hard okay so now let's talk about the fourth house which is the family um so for pile number four sometimes if we're to read this together sometimes i feel there's that conflict between you want to work um like have a career and then um and then spending time with your family right so anyways fourth house if i were to read it separately fourth house is uh the cancer house okay so it's about um anything dealing with the family dealing with the tribe dealing with like history of stuff the ancestral of things um um finding the roots of something so anthropologist might be really good with the fourth house the roots right digging deep into things so like anything if you were to be um a psychologist it would be like um like the family therapist or the um the 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 family counselor type of things like looking into the roots of uh what's causing problems or that kind of things okay but 
um, anth and anthrop uh, that's why anthropologist. Um, so let's see anything dealing. So fourth house taking care of people and the family. So, um, like nanny or like, um, house, housekeeping people, right? Um, butlers, fourth house, um, fourth house is also about land. Okay. So anything dealing with real estate or developing a plot of land or farming. Okay. Fourth house. Um, yeah, real estate investment, real estate agent, um, will be something as well. Or you're really good at making people feel comfortable and secure. Um, and, 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 um, building. So I would say like, um, people who work in like home or for example, when I say home is like, like old people's home, um, or like orphanage, right? Taking care of these kids. Um, or, um, I'm thinking about like my friend's mom, she used to, oh, foster homes, right? Not only for people, but you can also be foster parents for like animals too. So like, that sense of security base roots. Okay. So that kind of things. So Capricorn, we kind of talked about, so now let's talk about if Capricorn is at the fourth house roots, um, <laughs> you might be really strict. Um, uh, but Capricorn fourth house, um, I would say building like a really concrete, um, again, like police officer, what I see this as like, um, a government position almost, right? Cause that's like the base of a country government. Um, so like city counselor or city working for the city or working for the county, um, anything, what else? Capricorn 10th house, which is the same thing. Mm. Okay, so fourth house is like that routine. You're really good at following rules, super responsible. I think we talk talk about all of that. So um oh organizing the home, right? So like an organizer um for the family for 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 people for family or for homes, so like interior designer. Okay real estate agent. Yeah. Okay. So let's take a look at these. What are some advices for pile number four? Advice for pile number four. Oh, Capricorn and 10th house. You can, this is okay. If you, you are really good or you have a talent if you really want to be your own boss and you can, okay? Um, be your own boss. That creating, um, so you can work from home as well, Capricorn in the fourth house. Um, you can work from home. So anything that's like a home-based type of freelancing. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So any of those that you can do, okay? Working from home. Um, yep. Okay. Advice for pile number four. We're not reading reversals. Okay. Look at that advice for pile number four. We got the ace of swords. You have really clear, sharp mind. Um, or if we were to read the reversal, that was uh, Ace of Swords in reverse. Sometimes you're a little confused because you're you have way too many choices. Okay, you have way too many choices because you're really good at anything that you really wanted to do. Again, fourth house, I would say you guys are super smart. Capricorn, it really is one of those um, um, signs that you can't really do anything because you work hard. Um, it's just whether are you interested in doing it or not. Because even if you're not interested, that's the thing about Capricorn. They will do it. 
They will do it and they will become very, very good at it. Um, okay, so I think pile number four, you have a lot of choice. You're really good at a lot of things. Um, you might be a little confused or not sure of not not maybe not confused but not sure of what you really wanted to do mm, so hopefully what i just told you up here maybe could give you a little bit of an idea but if you really want to have like a really clear idea for people that chose pile number four in particular for you maybe you do need like a private reading if you want to if you want to i'm not pushing it okay and I'm not pushing it to do it with me. Do it with other people. Or if you know how to read charts, that then um, maybe consider your astrology birth chart. And I will tell you what to look for. Um, you can um, consider your ascendant, your sun sign, your moon sign, and your midheaven. Okay. And then also the so your and then your chart ruler, which is your ascendant. Uh, the planet that rules your ascendant and then also the planet that rules your midheaven and then see which house it lands in what kind of aspects it's making with other planets that kind of things so um yeah for, for power number four i think the advice for you or suggestion for you is that you really are good very good at um or maybe seven of cups sometimes is a talking about having too many choices you're really good at a lot of things and so you want to do a lot of things at the same time but maybe you should narrow it down capricorn really is better it's not like gemini or like pisces or like maybe even libra they're really they like to do multiple things at the same time but capricorn i would say like focus on one thing at a time make and then have it prosper from roots to the top of like to its prospering um position or situation like having it prosper and bloom and blossom then move on to make a second um business or whatever okay because you could have multiple businesses but just focus on one at a time and do it from from beginning to end okay and then open up another one you can have multiple it doesn't have you're not we're not stuck to just one okay but do one at a time that would be more of a capricorn suggestion if you're a gemini do it do multiple things at the same time because you get bored really easily and you're very good at doing multiple things and but then the thing is with gemini or or libra or something or or, or even like pisces is that we need someone else to help us <laughs> we're not very good at doing one thing or and or that we need multiple things at the same time but then we need to do it with somebody else okay so that's the difference but capricorn do it at one at a time and then you can do multiple things one after another okay so that's what i see for pile number four and um if you have anything you would like to share with me you can leave it in the comment section below and don't forget to like um to to like, share, and subscribe to my channel, enjoy my video, and turn on that notification bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.